what's the deal pickles so this video I actually can't even remember if I've done an introduction I'm sitting yes and I'm I need to explain this yes this is gonna be a long introduction this is going to be about the temperature slash mood scarf situation that I'm working on and I'll explain and you'll see footage so that's what this is going to be about but I do have to kind of explain my whole situation because I'm going for imperfect execution like that is just about execution getting up regular content making sure that you know we keep our relationship right and tight like on the same page that means I got to get on here when I see a window of opportunity it's like have you ever did jump double dutch did you jump double dutch as a kid if you didn't or if you did you'll understand this in double dutch there's two jump ropes both jump ropes are moving at the same time you stand on the outside of the jump ropes because you want to get on the inside and you rock your body to the <laughs> now I'm not even gonna lie to you I was one of those double dutch jump ropers a double dutch ers that I never quite was good I was alright but you wouldn't want to really tag me in unless you had to so my my whole reason for saying all of this is, is I'm rocking and I'm just the alright double dutcher <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but it fits. So, with this temperature blanket, this mood blanket, I am going to talk about it in this video. You're going to see the footage of me pulling everything together, and you're going to see where I am at this moment. You are going to witness my imperfect execution, and I hope that you will continue to tag me in what you're doing because I've already seen the pictures on IG, and I'm loving them. It's not like it's a bunch of people, but it don't matter. All I need is one. All I need is one. Yeah. So let's get to the footage. If you're going to stick around, then stick around and watch the rest of the video. If not, don't forget to thumbs up the video. Follow my channel. Come back later. If you are working on a temperature or mood blanket, don't forget to tag me on Instagram. You can find me um, at Dana Pittman Online, which is myself, but then I also have my crafting one, which is Crafters Vlog, where I post pictures throughout my crafting process. Um, and I'm trying to get better about it because I like just having the document there, and it's easier to pull pictures into Ravelry, which I love too. So let's get to this. Yeah, you are getting me and my old two big shirt and my sports bra and we just gonna do it so stick around to after the introduction i'll see you all in just a second Today I'm coming on because I just recently did a update video for my channel and as I was talking on that video I talked about this idea of doing either a temperature blanket or a mood blanket. The actual piece could either be a blanket or a scarf and I've been thinking about it for a little while and the more that I recorded the video the more I realized I wanted to do it. And so today So today, um, what I did is I went through, 
actually I'm gonna back up my first mind was to go to which I talked about on the video to go to a site I'm just gonna look here y'all just know I'm looking here so if I look shifty it's just easier to just look at myself and know that I'm centered and everything um, and all of this is because I'm getting ready <laughs> for a retreat so my studio is a mess back to the to the regular schedule program so originally what I thought is that I would go to a site and uh, at the time I was thinking that I wanted to do it in Morocco uh, because I just love the feel of the Morocco yarn and I have it in sweaters and I was like oh, it'd be cool to do it in a scarf or something and um, so uh, that was my first thought but then um, the the yarn shop that I go to that I know that carries it in my area when I went to their site they just didn't have colors that just kind of jumped out at me and usually they may have more in the store but I just had to go by the fact of it's not close to me and if I'm going to do that drive well then I want to feel like you know like it's something there so uh, the second option was then to go on to Knit Picks because Knit Picks has several lines that just has a, an array of colors. So I thought, okay, you know, let me turn a little bit. Y'all just be, just know whatever y'all see behind me, it shall be kept with us, okay? As I put it on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Um, and you may see my son come out. Okay the light is better go to knit picks uh, pick out the colors get maybe a skin or two of those colors and then if I when I it's time to replenish because this is something that will be going on for a, a year then I know exactly the colors to get and once I thought about that I was like well let me go because I have my stash actually separated into containers there's one that is full of red heart Karen those types of um, regular regularly available yarns um, all of those and there are acrylic and then I have another container that has my um, willow yarns and my nitpick yarns and a lot of those I have them in sets because when I buy those I usually will buy 6 to 12 skeins of whatever because they're for bigger projects and I went through those and um, when I came out I was like well I have these colors those wouldn't have been the colors that I would have selected had I gone to a site but I thought it would make something very pretty and it would make something not just something pretty because I don't think to me that that's the intent of this but to do something that would be representative of this time so so when I thought of it that way I was like well then really the color is not like because it's not a pattern right so it's the color is not the number one thing so once I had that in mind I was like well then let me go to my other set of stash yes I have another with head well it has I have two others <laughs> one is all of the things that I've put together and bundled up and put them in sets of how I plan to use them and then I have like a drawer that was steel of stuff from when I was getting the yarn box socks because I was getting yarn box socks classic and I can't remember the third one but it was like their premiere one and so um, I had one drawer that had all the uh, tubes of the sock yarn and so I just started pulling those out and the reason why those were still left in the tube because those colors were not necessarily colors that I loved but they were there it was good quality yarn it, but it wasn't something like I would pick which is the great thing about getting yarn subscri subscriptions. Um, and those particular ones that I have in this drawer were ones that didn't make it to other projects because the great thing about the yarn box classic at the time was that you picked your colorway and so everything that came in those were like faves almost immediately, right? Okay, so I went into this drawer, I pulled them out, I had some, some that were classic, some were, that were socks that were all in this drawer because for the most part there weren't colors that I would pick, okay? So I'm going to show you what I did. I'm going to use these. I honestly like have no idea how this is going to turn out because all of these colors are on the murky end 
However, they have pops of stuff that I really feel like it's going to be some really great potential. And so I'm going to show you. So I ended up with this box. I was just looking for five ish colors um, or different color options. And so what I'm planning to do is I'm going to show you and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do. The first one that I have, some of these I have two of, just a second. Some of them I had two of, and what I'm doing is just putting these to the side. I'm just stacking stuff on top of stuff. Here's the five. Here's one, two, three, four, five. So you see what I mean by kind of murky? So essentially, this is like more of a like burgundy, purplish kind of pink, mauve. This has gray, white, green, teal, cream, and tan. It's kind of hard to see because the light is so bright. There it goes. This one, I already know what this is going to represent when you confused. <laughs> And then this is like a nice, like almost denim blue with little hues of almost um, like a lighter baby blue, maybe even more on the inside. So here's my thinking. These are not necessarily colors I would pick. I have a feeling that this is going to turn out really nice, but it's going to look kind of murky for a while. And I really believe that it will represent what this process is supposed to be about. Well, not supposed to be because... It's crafting, so it's whatever you make it, but what I want it to represent. So what I would like for it to represent is I want to take those five colors. I'm going to associate um, um, a, a mood with each color, and then I'm going to put those on the index card. I'm going to place the, the color, like a little bit of the yarn from it, and take a picture. And I'm going to take a picture because all of these are have a somewhat murky scale of coloring. So I'm sure at some points in time, they're going to almost look similar, which I think is going to be very interesting. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these up in a cake. I got to do this fast because I'm supposed to be doing something else and you know how that goes. I'm going to do all five of these up in cakes. I'm going to decide what each of them mean. I have a bag that I don't use anymore. Just, I, I just, I don't use it anymore, but I'm going to show you and I'm just going to keep it all in there. And if you've been with me a while, you've seen this bag. I remember getting it on sale a long time ago at uh, Joanne. And it's nice and deep. So I'm going to put the extra skeins in the bottom, put the current skeins on top, and then I'll be able to put the actual piece on top inside here. I've decided that I am going to knit instead of crochet. And what I did is I'm not doing any particular uh, pattern. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm going to take it back. I'm going to do a particular stitch, not a particular pattern. And then what I did is I just went to, I have a drawer where there's nothing but a lot of single um, uh, circular knit needles that I have. And even though I have a set of interchangeable, I like when I'm doing a project like this that's going to be ongoing to not use my interchangeable ones. Because the reason why I like the interchangeable ones is when you're working on a project and you have to change sizes, you don't have to change the cord, okay? You can just change the tips. So when I'm doing something that's going to be on a project for a long length of time, I like to just do an actual um, circular needle that's just that size. And so I have this. Looking at the size, I think this will be a great size. It's size 4, which is not tiny, but it's not big and these are all pretty much sock yarns so it can't be too big if you want to still have i don't want a holy type of a fabric to be made from this so i think size four is good um even the only downside of this particular one is that the actual cord is kind of this um coppery kind of feel or something 
Um, so what I may end up doing is finding the same one. I believe I have the same one in an Addy um, that was just a, a standalone type. So I'm going to look for that um, if it's not on another project. But I believe it's the one that I just took off my needles uh, last week. I'm just... Every time I start recording, I'm like, oh, my face started itching. Okay. So, size four. The stitch that I plan to do um, is a stitch that I saw on, I'm going to call her Miss Judy. I know her channel is called Judy something or another <laughs> on Miss Judy's channel. And she did this stitch a long time ago and I just saved it in my phone. And, um, because I didn't know what I wanted to use it for. And what's so funny is I went looking back through my phone when I was saving my notes to, to like how I wanted to do this project. Cause it came to me while I was asleep and I got up this morning and I kind of was just taking notes. And, um, once I went in to go put in my notes, I had a document in my phone that was for a temperature blanket or a mood blanket is I called it temperature or mood blanket in my notes and that stitch was in there so I'm gonna do that stitch it's called um, I believe she calls it an everything stitch um, what I'll do is when I put this up because I'm gonna put this up um, pretty soon I'm just gonna save this like this put it up uh, because this is something that really I should have done starting January 1 I did it so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start where I am Put this I'm gonna do these in cakes put them in the bag I have the needle I have the stitch the only other thing I have to decide is if I want to do it as a scarf which was my original um, thought or if I want to do it as a um, like a not a blanket but when I say scarf, I don't mean scarf like something narrow, but scarf as in something that I could put around my neck or maybe do it as it sew the ends together and make it a um, eternity scarf or do it a little bit thicker and wider like a square or a big rectangle scarf, right? Um, because then that could be, if it's going to be two... Here's what I'm thinking, because <laughs> this is a vlog, right? Um, if you, uh, I plan to go out and back in, so that's um, two, um, technically two rows per day. And if you do it every day, that would be 365 less this 20 something, so 340 something rows. Times two because you're going out and back so um, I don't know what the measurement is because I am NOT gonna do a swatch so I'm just gonna cast it on so what I think I will do is go either into my patterns or into into Ravelry and just look at pictures and see what kind of ends up at the size I want I'm thinking to just keep it just easy cast on 100 stitches and be done with it but i think her pattern was um a four the repeat of four plus two um let me get a calculator just a second um Four plus two. So here's what I would think. Um, Whenever you have a repeat, you take that repeat and you mo and you it, it has to go evenly by the repeat. Plus, if there's a plus, what? How do I say it? It has to be divided evenly by the repeat, and then you add those extra stitches. So if it's four 
or the repeat of four plus two, then you want to take that four and divide it into something evenly, then add two stitches and that will be what you cast on. Um, in my mind, when I say 100 stitches, I think immediately like almost um, around the circumference of a hat. And to me, that's not long enough. Um, then I think 180. Just one second. I, I got another idea. Hold that thought. Pulling out this, it's an old, um, uh oh, knit book. I don't think I've done any patterns from out of this book. Um, but I'm going to use this to help me decide so that once I post this up, I have a plan. So what I would usually do is look for a picture. There is a, what do you want to call it? A poncho in here. There is this thicker scarf here. So then what I would do, uh, try to see if they have a blanket in here. Oh, there is a blanket. So what I would do is go through and look for it. Ah, here we go. It's a throw, and for the throw, they cast on 207 stitches. The insides for them was a 45 by 40, 40 by 45, but this is a size three down on the size eight. Kind of makes me want to double it. Okay, I'm going to look at one more thing. This is what, this, what I'm doing right now is kind of how I come up with stuff. Even though it's, I'm using something as a guide, it allows me to have a base and then I can make adjustments from there. So I'm going to look for the other one. Okay, the punt, uh poncho the poncho but it's done in bulky oh they doing this on bulky with big needles size 10 needles and 58 stitches not helpful <laughs> so This is kind of helpful, but not. So the last option would be to grab one of these skeins and look at what the measurements are. Some of the hand dyes don't have your typical measurements the way that you would have from a store-bought version. It's gonna be a nice little lengthy blog. Here we go. Size three, they basically say roughly 26 stitches for four inches. 26 stitches per four inches. 26 for four inches. If I were honest, what I want it to be around 20 inches. Twenty, maybe thirty, twenty-five, roughly twenty-five inches. That is really long. It's not a blanket, though. Twenty-five times. All right. So I'm saying twenty-five inches. Twenty-five inches, and they said roughly twenty-six stitches. 25 inches times, oh no, 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 25 inches 
24. I'm going to do 24 because 24 is evenly divisible by 4. So when, I know. I'm sorry, y'all. 24 inches <laughs> divided by 4 because this gauge was based on 4 inches, okay? That would give you uh, 6. So 6 times 26 stitches would be casting on 156. Okay, so I like where this is going. So if I took it up... I'm looking at my, my cutting mat to just get eyeball how long it is. Because I kind of feel like I want to do 30. Thirty before that would need to be thirty-two divided by four is eight times twenty-six equals two hundred and eight plus two equals. 210 stitches i think that's what i'm gonna go with i will cast on to, now the thing that's gonna be like uh, is the fact that <laughs> when these yarns run out i'm gonna just be like because i don't i mean i have two skeins of three of them but only one skein of two of them but um these have a lot, the yardage is high. So this is going to be somewhere between a scarf and a scarf. It's not going to be a throw and it's not going to be a blanket. So what I'm going to do is cast on, I said 210 stitches with a size four knitting needle. And I'm going to... kind of want to put a border on it from jump do I want to do that I might I might see how this is what this is what happens okay so I'm gonna stop talking aloud here we go 210 stitches is what I'm casting on with a four uh, inch I mean a four needle I'm going to cake these up and I'm going to probably be very conscious of what I decide to do with the um, the ones that I don't have as much like this one. But it's 462 yards. I think this is going to be just fine. I think it's going to be just fine. And if, it, if I run out early, then I'll just use what I have. And... Um, and then I'll just take it from there. So 210 cast on. I'm going to cast on probably with one of the ones where I have plenty of it. Which is why I kind of thinking I want to put a border. I have some gray. I am. I have some gray. Uh, ooh. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And what I'll do is before I upload this, I will actually, I'm going to cake all of these. Um, and then I'll add that to this vlog. I will also cast on and add that to this vlog. And um, the last thing is deciding whether I want to just document every day or if I want to document maybe five days a week or four days a week. And honestly, I'm not going to be so strict with that right now. Um, um, what I plan to do with all of this is I really want it to be an experience. So it's not about the yarn. It's not just about um, making something. It's more so about the quiet time, the sitting still, and taking note of what type of attitude am I going into this day with? And so um, so that's why I really don't want to make it so that I want to document how I'm feeling every day. But it may be in the beginning that I really just actually add to it the day that I sit down. And I, and I want to do it every day. So let's just say it right there. Every day in the morning with my quiet time. I normally do quiet time every morning. Um, I get up, I pray, I read my Bible. And um, several of the days I also study, but after I come back from the gym. And so what I'll do is add the, adding the knitting to this 
into my my morning routine and I think it's gonna be amazing I think it's gonna be amazing because I have some really big goals for this year and those goals are predicated on me being in the right headspace because I'm, I'm chartering into areas that I've never been in before and I am the one that I am the one in charge of me so there's not a boss or somebody to say hey Dana you need to do this hey Dana you need to do that I'm the one that needs to tell the people working for me here's what I need done I need this done by this date and I need to be very balanced <laughs> and very and really focused and driven and so I want to ensure that you know when scripture says to think on good things that I am very aware of where my mind is and if my mind is not on good things that I put myself there as I go into my day and so um yeah that's what's up so now I'm about to get off of here I cake them up on my messy table get it all done then I'm gonna come back show you all put this video up so that anybody else that is wanting to join me will have it up uh, we are going to be going for imperfect execution, push and play, making it happen. And before I get to motivating anybody, I'm about to get this done because I got other stuff to do. Let's get it. So what I'm about to do right now is go through, do the rest of the skin, the hanks into cakes. And I kind of wanted to stop for just a second. Um, this is kind of one of those yarns and let me just try to bring it just a little bit closer where sometimes you originally get it and it can look one way, but when you actually open it up, cause I thought on the outside, it looked sort of murky. Like here was this skein, this one. But on the inside, it's this really um, of, of blue teals and purples. And so I really feel like it's going to bring all this together. The only thing that I kind of feel like I'm missing is a real good purple. And I went through my other purples and I just feel like I don't know if I want to use those because I have them already paired up for other projects. But once I get them all done, oh, but this one even though technically it's more of a burgundy than a purple i really feel like this will somewhat lighten it up even though it's dark and um and this one too this one is so pretty um and this is more my lane than i thought but it was just once you get it caked because when it's in those hanks the the colors are in chunks versus in the actual order that you'll see it when it, it is in your piece so i'm gonna keep going that's all the little footage i'm gonna do because it's already hard to see my place is a mess and i want to go ahead push play keep going get this all finished so i can move on to the next step here are all of the yarns and this is what i am working with for my mood scarf I have cast it on and I worked two, technically two rows. Um, I 
did uh, I added four additional stitches to the 210 so that made 214 I did that so there will be two knit stitches at the beginning and two knit stitches at the end since this was a repeat of four plus two that means the end will have four knit stitches in the beginning will have two knit stitches and actually in the beginning I'm slipping one uh, knit wise and then knitting the other and then going into the pattern um, I have not assigned the colors yet but I will and for now um, this is going to be the start of this journey so you've made it this far in the video this video has been full of all types of information including um, how I created the basis for this scarf also me getting started and I thought I would end it with showing and telling you my yarn to well I guess my associations uh, I I think I'm going to insert a picture so that you'll be able to see it. I'll insert it here. It's part of my handwriting. <laughs> but um, I'll put the picture here. One thing that I want to talk about is that I did quite a bit of research. And for a few days after recording the last video and, and really wrestling with whether I wanted to do this, I, for a second there, didn't want to do a mood. Um... It just felt like it could be something that could be a really a down thing and not thinking positively. And I feel like I can share that um, even though this is a crafting video because of the people that normally watch my videos. And if you've made it this far, that's you, girl. It's you. <laughs> and um, one of the things that I, I said earlier in this video is that this is going to be about a process and a state of mind versus the end product of the scarf and I really wanted to embrace that when I identified the selections for my yarn to my whether it was a mood or you want to do it to your temperature which um, before I continue shout out to um, the people on Instagram that have already started we, I was tagged by one person that is doing a temperature blanket her colors are beautiful and another that she's doing a mood blank a mood I think she's doing if I'm shawl I think if I'm remembering correct correctly it's a shawl so you know it's gonna be great to watch their progress on Instagram but with that said um, I did quite a bit of research and then I kind of just settled into it and th thought about what I have since I have some colors Half of my colors, I have two skeins, uh, two, I had two skeins, the other half I only had one. So what I did is try to associate the two skein mood to something that I feel like just on general are the areas that I could spend a lot of time in. So for me, um, that was the content, um, also the um, either sick, tired, lazy, dull, unmotivated, blah so I, that is all one um and, well let me say the first one because you'll see it but it's content average good normal and to me that's kind of like almost um like a daily that's where you are in my brain the other end of that spectrum would be the sick tired lazy dull unmotivated bored blah that is kind of um rarely am i bored <laughs> So it's going on to be bored, but then I have that one. And then the other one that I had two skeins of is hopeful, productive, active, energetic, motivated. And so, and then I had the other end, um, which is, you'll see the one that I made up, which is favor ain't fair, <laughs> um, expectant, blessed, that's one. And then I had, I'm angry, frustrated, grumpy, anxious, numb, sad, insecure, depressed, lonely, but that is one. And then the last one is my sweet spot, you know, in the zone, creative, artistic. And so, um, those are my six. To you, I would say, if you're doing this, I'd love to hear what your process has been. I hope that this video has been helpful. I shared a lot about 
how I get to an end product of what I'm going to make. I am a person that likes to fly by the seat of my pants in crafting because my life otherwise is somewhat structured, like really structured, which is why I don't like always following patterns. I like to just have fun and just... So we're on this journey. I will be updating pictures on Instagram. I will put it here, which is Crafters Vlog. Um, it won't be every day because you won't see much progress, but even today I'm working on it and it's going to be very interesting. This I'm telling you, it's probably going to look so weird <laughs> because you're really not doing a lot. And in the end, if, you know, if I have other colors left over or I haven't used a lot of colors periodically, I might jump in and just use some of those to just balance it all out. But I'm just going to have fun with this. So. I hope that you've enjoyed this vlog. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel. If you are a subscriber, hey girl, hey, you know you are the reason why I am here. Um, tell me in the comment section, are you doing this? Like, are you doing a temperature blanket? Are you doing a mood? Whether it's a blanket, shawl, scarf, I've heard of someone doing a cow. Um... And if you are, I'd love to know how you associate your colors, how you decide on how you associate your colors. And if you have any questions about this, put them in the comment section. I do answer to comments, but I love when you give me like a really good juicy question so that I can make another video. You know, if you guys help me with that, then I could come back in. I went to church, now I'm ready to sit down, get this over with so that this video can go up. Um... Thank you. I appreciate you and I hope that you have a fantastic re weekend and a fantastic week and I'm going to get back to work because I got some stuff to do today. So that is it for this vlog and um, I got more coming your way. So I'll see you all hopefully sooner than later. Take care and goodbye.